For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Welcome back to Whataburger Field here in Corpus Christi, Texas. Jason Shepard and Tuckett Slade. Watching the Cougars lead one to nothing. Mitch McIntyre with a solo home run in the top of the second. The only run scored in this ball game. We're in the top of the fourth inning. Perez still on the mound for Corpus Christi. Facing Keaton Kringlin, the designated hitter. Swing and a foul. Strike one to Keaton. Yeah, healthy swing there by Keat. Looking for extra base hits on that kind of swing. That's the type of swings I want to see from Keaton, a guy who's been an RBI guy his whole career at BYU and a guy that can really, it's a doubles machine. 0-1 pitch to Keaton. Turns on that, fouls it to the left. That's an understatement on turning on that. No balls, two strikes. Keaton Kringlin here in the top of the fourth inning. BYU leading 1 0. 0 2 pitch. Keaton just gets a piece of it, fouls it straight back. Count yeah. remains 0 2. That's a mistake right there by Perez. 0 2, he hung that slider, and Keat just missed it. That's one that you, as a hitter, you're like, man, I needed to get that one. He made a mistake 0 2, and Perez is like, oh, I wish I had that one back. I'm glad he didn't kill it. Mitch McIntyre on deck. 0 2 pitch to Keaton. Swung over the top for strike three in the first out in the top of the fourth. Mitch McIntyre coming to the plate. Last time he was there, sent one over the right field wall to give the Cougars a 1-0 lead. That is our score here in the top of the fourth as well. First pitch to McIntyre, taken for strike one. Could have bet you a lot of money he was not going to go fastball first <laughs> pitch after the last fastball he saw. 1-4-0 and zero for BYU, 0-1-1 zero, one, and one for Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Swing and a miss, strike two to McIntyre. Yeah, good changeup right there. Got a battle right here. Second baseman is playing deep in the hole and way out into, into right field. Any ball hit on the right side of the second base, it's going to be a hit because there's nobody there. 0-2 pitch. Fly ball into left field. Williams back to make the catch. And that's two away here in the top of the fourth. Third baseman, DJ McNew. McNew. Comes to the plate with two outs. DJ grounded out to third in his first appearance. First pitch from Perez. Swing and a miss, strike one. Yeah, a little over aggressive right there with DJ. A fastball was a ball. Just up there trying to do some damage. Got to stay within yourself and stay in the zone. one pitch from Perez lined into the gap in left center and DJ McNew gets a base hit stands at first base with two outs in the top of the fourth yeah good piece of hitting right there got the breaking ball that stayed in and he's able to drive it over shortstop I thought off the bat it might split the gap and get to the wall but good job by Williams getting there and cutting it off that brings Noah Hill to the plate two outs in the top of the fourth McNew at first base with the single to left center. The pitch from Perez gets past the catcher, Drake Osborne, and DJ McNew alertly moves down to second base. Nice job by DJ. As soon as that ball was past Osborne, he was gone. Yeah, great job getting to second. And now this is the this is what I call Noah Hill time because this is where he's at his best. He loves the pressure situation. This is where he's like, okay, hey, all I need is a single here to score a run. Mom team. and dad are in attendance. Yep, team could really do it 
really need it right now. BYU's had some opportunities to add a run and haven't been able to do it. We'll see if Noah Hill can drive in McNew from second base. And that's exactly what he does as that ball gets past the third baseman and into left field. McNew rounding third. He will score. And that's an RBI single from Noah Hill. BYU with a 2-0 lead in the top of the fourth inning. I'm telling you, that's what Noah Hill does. I was a little worried today, though, because his parents don't get to watch him very often, right, or family or friends because he lives in Texas. They're from Texas. And, you know, they're in the stands. I'm thinking maybe he's going to wear a little pressure because mom and dad are (laughs) here, and and that didn't even phase him. That was a hit hard, great piece of hitting right there. And it was a nice diving try by Sanchez, but just better hitting by Noah Hill. And that's a fantastic job. You get the DJ single. You get the pass ball that gets him to second, and then Noah does his job and and hits up the RBI. That's great team baseball right there. Freshman Carson Matthews at the plate. First pitch he saw from Perez for ball. Second pitch is flied out to right field. Jeffrey's there to make the catch, and that retires the Cougars, but not before they add a run in the top of the fourth inning. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Cougars leading the Islanders 2 0 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Now back to the ballpark and Jason Shepard. BYU leading 2 0 in the bottom of the fourth inning. Jared Lesser has pitched a great one so far. His first batter here that he'll face in the bottom of the fourth, my guy, Itchy Burtz. We've been waiting for months to say that. I have David Itchy Burtz. First pitch to Burtz from Lesser is low and inside. I want to know the story behind it. <laughs> you right? too. That's the one thing I should have asked when we had the Islanders uh, SID in here what the story is with Itchy Burtz. Maybe the guy's just itchy. I don't know. 1-0 pitch to Burtz. Ground ball right at Clough. Glove over to first. One away, so they retire Itchy Burt. Because remind me, what's his real name? David. David Burt. I can't even think of how itchy, other than like you said, other, he's, maybe he's itchy, right? Maybe he's, he's always itching his arms. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. We, we, will, we will find we'll out find that out. the answer to that story out. before we the end to. of our broadcast. We have to. We will, I, I make that promise to you, the BYU baseball listener. One away here in the bottom of the fourth. Lesser, his first pitch to Nick Anderson is fouled off past third base. Owen won the count to Anderson, center fielder. I know Anderson's a three hole, but he can really run. I think DJ's playing a little too deep at third. He might try to drag bunt sometime today. Anderson flies to left field and a nice running catch by Mitch McIntyre to retire Williams and now quickly two away in the bottom of the fourth. I thought you were going to go Anderson flies the left, and McIntyre flies in to catch it. Oh, I thought that was coming. Okay, maybe next time. <laughs> he covered a lot of ground he right there. He did cover a lot of I ground. I thought that was going to just loop over short, and Mitch went a long way to get there. Great job by Lester to get the first two guys of the inning. You know, when you're pitching with the lead, Shep, the crucial thing, which cost us on Monday, right, when we had our three-run lead, was that we let guys on base to start the inning with no outs, right? right? You let multiple guys on by either hit by pitch or a bloop single or a walk, and next thing you know, that turns into a bigger inning. Lesser facing Jeffries, and Jeffries quickly in the hole 0-2. So I was talking to Casey Jacobson in batting practice, and he was talking about Jeffries and said he went to junior college out of high school, and that he was a guy that almost got cut on his baseball team in high school, and he just kept getting better every single year. 0-2 pitch. Got to get rid of it. Chop to Clough. Clough gloves. Throws to oh, first. He had him. He had him. But Sue not able to grab a hold of the ball. Sheppy had him. He did. He had him. Oh. That was a great job by Jackson to move up and grab the ball. The exchange was perfect. He knew he had to get rid of it quick. But Sue not able to glove it. And that puts Jeffries at first base with two outs. Yeah, tough break there. Great effort by Clough. Got there, made a good throw. And, and Sue just, just probably, it looked like Sue scrolled the glove a little too yeah, early. just closed it up yeah. a little too quick. Which isn't like Sue because he's a fantastic defender. If he had a healthy arm, he'd be our best defender on the field. That's how good his hands are. So 
definitely not characteristic normal of, of Sue there at first. It's the second hit for the Islanders. BYU out hitting Corpus Christi 6-2. to two. The batter is the catcher, Drake Osborne. Yeah. First, first pitch from Lesser is... I understand, foul. you know, the, the home scoring and whatnot, but if I'm Lesser, I'm upset right now. Like, hey, how do you give that a hit? Because if it's caught, he's out. Yes. Right? That I you expected know? an error. Yeah, well, but we got a couple of beneficial. They had, there's no errors. That, there's only one error, and I thought maybe there could be two on our first inning. So I won't complain too much. No. Pitch to Osborne, high, evening the count at one ball and one strike. Jeffries at first. Two away, BYU leading two to nothing. A run on the top of the second, and then another in the top of the fourth. Solo home run from Mitch McIntyre, and then an RBI single from Noah Hill. 1-1 pitch taken for strike two. Man, that breaking ball today is so good, Shep. It is just filthy. Night has fallen in Corpus Christi, Texas. The lights are on. The bridge on the other side of the field is lit up. It's gorgeous. One, two. Taken for ball two, even in the count of two balls and two strikes. It changes colors. Yeah, I was wondering that. I was wondering as a hitter. I mean, they have this huge 40-foot like, monster in, yep. in, in center for the batter's eye, which is normal. But I wonder to the right of that, for like a right-handed hitter, can you, if you can see that, and if it's like distracting to hit, I would think yeah. you would be able to or see that. Or is that high enough up that it's outside of your view? I don't know. I wouldn't like that as a hitter. 2 2 pitch on its way. Lined into left field for a base hit. Jeffries is going to go first to third. They've got Osborne stuck between first and second. Jeffries trying to advance to home. They're going to throw down to got third, him. and Noah Hill gets him as he's drive, diving back to the third base bag. Noah Hill in the top of the inning getting an RBI single. That's in fantastic. the bottom of the inning throwing out a runner at third. Jeff, that's fantastic baseball right there. Wow. We head to the top of the fifth. Cougars leading 2-0 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Top of the fifth inning from Whataburger Field in Corpus Christi, Texas. Jason Shepard, Tuckett Slade with you here on BYU Radio 107.9 FM. Cougars with a 2-0 lead. Perez still on the mound for the Islanders. He's facing the top of the order, Danny Jelilich. That bottom of the fourth, a nice job by Noah Hill. Receiving the ball from Brian Sue at first, throwing out the runner at third to retire the Islanders in the inning. A fantastic job by Noah. Yeah, no, it was just a great overall team D. You have the, the single to left where the, the runner decides to go first to third. McIntyre throws it to third, but Carson Headley, you know, cuts it off, throws it to second to Clough. Clough then throws it to first to Sue, and the runner from third now takes off. He throws it to home, and then Noah throws it to third to get the out. It was a a lot of team baseball right yes, there. Yes, it was. But perfect throws by every single one of those guys. And Noah didn't have a lot of space and made a perfect throw to get the third out and get out of the inning. It was fantastic. Any errant throw and a run scores in that situation. Yeah, absolutely. 2-1 count to Danny Jelilich. Nobody out. Cougars leading 2-0. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Corpus Christi, Texas. 2-1 pitch. Strike three looking. Danny will head back to the BYU dugout. Yeah, I really think Danny got caught guessing off speed because that was a fastball almost right down the middle, a pitch he can definitely handle. And just and you can tell he's looking off speed because, or else he wouldn't have been fooled by that. The batter, Brian Sue, playing first base, moved up in the lineup, hitting second today. And he lines that ball right over the head of Perez and into center field. It'll be a base hit for Brian Sue, his second of the evening. Yeah, that's what Brian Sue does. It's a hit machine. You know, until he got sick last year, he was leading our team the first about 70 at bats of the year, batting close to 400, if not a little bit over, and leading our team in home runs. One out, runner on first. The dangerous hitter by the name of Brock Hale in the batter's box. 
Brock already with a single and a ground out. Perez with another quick throw to first. Man, his Nice job by Sue to get over there. His feet are so quick. Well, they're deceiving. Yeah. Because you don't realize before it's almost too late that his feet are in motion and he's turned around. First pitch to Hale, taken for strike one. You know, I keep thinking that, I keep trying to look to see if it's a balk, right? If that left foot's moving first before the right foot. But it's so hard because they're so quick that it looks legal to me, and it's a really good move. On deck is Jackson Clough, the batter. Brock Hale chops that ball to third base. Sanchez with the throw to first, just gets Hale in time. Sue advancing to second. The Cougars now with two outs, have a runner in scoring position with Jackson Clough, second second baseman, coming to the plate. Well, Jackson's last at bat, he didn't get the job done by bringing in the run, but he hit a hard, hard, hard ground ball missile to the first baseman, and he made a good play on it. So much better at bat in that situation. Hope that this time you can hit another hard one just like that and and pick up that extra insurance run at second. Those two out RBI, Shep, we've talked about it all season, that are crucial. Perez facing Clough. Two outs. Brian Sue at second base. Clough takes strike one. I'm trying to time the bridge when it turns blue to make sure I get a picture of the bridge while it's blue. And now it's gone red, and I certainly don't want that picture. Yeah, we don't want that one. We want the, I like this, the little red, white, and blue. Ground ball to the shortstop. Over to first, and that retires the Cougars. We head to the bottom of the fifth. BYU leading Texas A&M Corpus Christi 2 nothing on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Jared Lesser facing Mike Williams, the left fielder here in the bottom of the fifth inning. BYU leading 2 to nothing. We're at Whataburger Field in Corpus Christi, Texas. BYU and Ohio State tomorrow, 2 p.m. local time, 1 Mountain on BYU Radio and ESPN 960. Williams lines that right in front of the left fielder Mitch McIntyre for a base hit to lead off the bottom of the fifth inning. Yeah, good piece of hitting right there. Inside out, line drive to left. Great way for the Islanders to start off the inning. Next up for the Islanders, designated hitter, Andruid Martinez. Andruid Martinez. The DH from Venezuela, the 5'10", 213-pound senior, makes his way to the batter's box. Nobody out in the bottom of the fifth. His team trailing 2 to nothing. Williams at first. Martinez flied out to Jackson Clough in the second inning. First pitch to Martinez. Shows bunt. Able to pull back. It's ball one. Noah Hill thought about throwing down to first base as Williams had a fairly decent lead. Yeah, it looked like they were trying to do a little bunt and run right there. Have him still bunt down the line and have him go first to third on it. The 1-0 pitch from Lesser. They certainly are trying to get Williams to second. He was off and running. Which I like. I mean... A lot of times some teams, when they get down, they stop being aggressive, right? They're afraid to, hey, we don't want to give up outs. We want to just kind of go, you know, single to first to third and things like that. But, hey, you got to know your strengths as an offense and play to them. This is a team that has stolen a lot of bases. They're six for eight early in the season. So they're certainly looking for opportunities to run. 1-1 pitch from Lesser. and Williams off and running again. Hill's throw down to second base. Actually gets past Clough. But nice job by Carson Matthews to back him up and keep that ball from rolling into the outfield. Yeah, I think that would have been in time. That throw would have been in time. It was just offline there. It sailed to the left of the plate. Now Williams is at second base. This is actually similar to a situation that Lesser found himself in in the first inning. Yeah, it is. Where he gave up a hit, and then on an error, 
the runner advanced to second base with nobody out. He was able to get out of that without anybody scoring. We'll see what Lesser can do now. Here in the bottom of the fifth, the one-two pitch to Martinez. Good pitch. Foul tip. Really good pitch. Again, you want to try to have, if you're the hitter, you want to try to have a good successful team at bat to find a way to get that runner to third. If you're, if you're lesser, you're trying to do whatever it takes to get him out and not let him advance to third. A strikeout or fly ball or a ground ball on the left side usually get that, that job done. One two count to Andruid Martinez, the Islanders de designated hitter. One two pitch, taken high for ball two, evening the count at two and two. Yeah, overthrow right there. Jared was just trying to throw a high fastball to see if he'd swing through, and he just a little too high. Couple guys in the bullpen now down there just, just getting their legs loose and getting their body going. On deck for Corpus Christi, third baseman Enrique Sanchez Jr. Or excuse me, it's the shortstop, Steven Rivera Shaheen. 2 2 pitch, ground ball past DJ McNew at third. Down the line in left field, and Williams is going to come around to score. It's an RBI single for the designated hitter, Andrew Ed Martinez. It cuts the lead 2-1 to one in favor of the Cougars. Yeah, that's a play that uh, DJ probably didn't need to die for. I felt if he took one more step, he could have backhanded that and still made that play. You know, he tried to die for it, and it was weird. It's like his glove was above, and the ball was kind of over his elbow and not where his glove would be. It kind of overextended on it. Definitely a play that he'd like to have back that he probably should have made. The hometown fans enjoying that one. You heard the cheers from the Texas A&M Corpus Christi Islander fans in attendance today. Now, runner on first, nobody out. A run has scored. BYU leading two to one, and Rivera Chassin showing bunt takes ball one. Rivera Shaheen from Puerto Rico. He's a 6'1", 188-pound sophomore. Flied out in the third inning. Martinez at first. Throw over to first. Martinez able to get back safely. Lester's done a really nice job on the mound tonight. See how he handles this pressure right now. Ball grounded to Brian Sue, who had moved up, gloves it, and meets Rivera Shaheen halfway down the line for the second out. But the runner does advance to second. And now with one out and a runner in scoring position, First baseman, Luke, Marbach. Luke Marbach, the batter from New Braunfels, Texas. 5'10", 178 pounds. He is a junior. He grounded out in the third inning. But he has an opportunity for the base hit to possibly tie this game at two apiece. It's 2-1 BYU. In the bottom of the fifth inning at Whataburger Field in Corpus Christi, Texas. Lesser's pitch to Marbach. It's low for ball one. As you mentioned, Tuck, some guys over in the BYU bullpen just lightly throwing. Just getting loose a little bit. Yep, in the fifth inning, Coach Littlewood likes to send guys down to get their bodies going to get ready for the, the end of a game. Lesser with a 1-0 pitch. Swing and a foul ball, leaving the count at 1-1. One and one. Keaton Kreenland out of the dugout to go grab that foul ball. Lester's up to 69 pitches now in the game. So maybe only has about 15 or 20 more left in him. 1-1 one, one pitch to Marbach. There's an appeal from 
Home plate umpire says he did not go around. He able to hold up on the swing. From our vantage point, it looked like he went around, but I thought it should have been a called strike. Two and one the count with one out. Martinez at second base. Well, you want to get him out right here without letting that, that runner keep advancing because their best hitter in Sanchez is on deck. The 2-1 pitch to Marbach. On its way from Lesser. Line drive over D.J. McNew into left field. And they'll hold up the runner at third. It'll be a single. Now runners on the corners with one out in the bottom of the fifth inning. Yeah, I got an elevated breaking ball and just hit a hard line drive over DJ. Mitch did a great job in left of breaking down and coming hard. There was no way they were going to try to send that runner with one out and this hit her up. Now if you're Lester, you're sitting here saying, okay, hey, I'm one pitch away from getting out of this inning. i got to make my best hit pitch right here and get out of this. Pitching coach Michael Bradshaw walking out to the mound, as is catcher Noah Hill. Coach Bradshaw has been a nice addition to the coaching staff. Been sitting next to him uh, on the bus. Been able to talk. Actually, our flight from from Salt Lake, we flew to Dallas, and then Dallas to Corpus Christi. And from the the D Dallas to Corpus Christi leg, was sitting right next to uh, Coach Bradshaw. It's been fun to get to know him. Yeah, Bradshaw is awesome. We really like him. He's the guy who's bringing a lot of young energy and some new ideas and some pretty good discipline to the staff. Uh, our pitchers have really, really responded to him and his workouts, and uh, we hope that shows some good things uh, to come for the program. Mound visit is over. Coach Bradshaw back in the dugout. Base runners back on first and third. Back to the top of the order, Enrique Sanchez, a single and a strikeout. He faces Jared Lesser. BYU leading 2-1. to one. But a base hit could change that very quickly. Lesser looks in to catcher Noah Hill. Gets the pitch. And a ground ball to third base. Over to second. Not in time. Over to first. They will get the out at first, but not before a run scores. And we're now tied at two runs apiece in the bottom of the fifth inning. Yeah, tough break there. They actually sent the runner, and it was a hit-and-run situation. DJ tried to say, hey, I'm still going to try to get this out at second, and if he, he was really close if he could have got that in a double play to get out of the inning, but uh, not in time and only got the one out. They got the hard out on the, on the throw to first, but, uh, which ties the game at 2-2. Coach Little was now out there arguing, and I think he's saying that because there was no slide, there was no slide at second that uh, it should have been an inter interference, automatic double play. I'm not sure what the umpire is saying. Coach Littlewood pats him on the shoulder, heads back to the dugout. Itchy Burtz. Itchy Burtz, the batter, the runner in scoring position at second base. Islanders have climbed back from a 2-0 deficit to tie the game at 2-2 here in the bottom of the fifth. Well, you gotta you gotta minimize right here, okay? You've given up two runs and make this game tied. You gotta find a way to get back into the dugout and get your offense back up without giving up a lead here. Hit you with a ground out and a strikeout. Two outs here from Whatabur Whataburger Field. Ironically enough, we have not eaten at Whataburger yet. Uh, I may or may not have had it last night at midnight, but uh, <laughs> I'm not telling anybody. <laughs> One ball and no strikes to Burtz. Lesser's pitch is low and inside for ball two. I was out. As yeah. soon as I laid down, I was out. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I couldn't get to bed to about one last night. Rumor has it, though, you can call a number and they'll deliver a Whataburger to the press box. Interesting. To see, see how that works. We may have to try that one out. Lesser steps off. And Coach Littlewood, he's going to make a change. He's made the call to the pen. 
We'll take a timeout. We'll let you know who's coming out to pitch for the Cougars. BYU in Texas A&M Corpus Christi tied at two runs apiece in the bottom of the fifth on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Reed McLaughlin, the new pitcher for the BYU Cougars. We begin or back to the bottom of the fifth inning. It's two runs apiece for the Cougars and the Islanders of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Reed has pitched four innings, allowed three hits, no runs, two walks. Done a nice job in the one appearance that he had this past weekend in Arizona. He inherits a runner at second. And a two balls, no strike count to the hitter, Itchy Burtz. Yeah, Reed's a guy that Coach Littlewood has a lot of confidence in. Right-hander that's 89-91. Good breaking ball, good changeup. You know, earned a lot of respect in his outing that we had against Northwestern. He came in in his innings and was fantastic. Islanders have caught up to the Cougars. Just now one run, one hit behind the Cougars. It's 2-7-0 and zero for BYU, 2-6-1 and one for the Islanders. Reed's first pitch to Burtz, taken for strike one. BYU led 2 to nothing, heading into the bottom of the fifth. Corpus Christi scored two runs here in the bottom of the inning with a runner at second and two outs looking to add more. 2-1 pitch, low for ball three. Three balls and one strikes to Itchy Burtz. On deck, the center fielder, Nick Anderson. Reed McLaughlin looking to in this inning. 3-1 pitch on its way. Swing and a miss for strike two. I feel like that scoreboard's wrong. Or did Lesser throw a pitch before he left? Because he's only thrown two pitches. I thought it would be one, two. Three pitches. I thought it would be one, two right now. It was a 2-0 count when we started with Reed. Oh, it was. It was okay, a 2-0 okay, count, okay. yes. That's where I got confused. Full count. 3-2 pitch from Burtz. Swing and a miss. Reed McLaughlin got him. That's going to retire the Islanders, but not before they score two runs. It's tied 2-2, heading to the top of the sixth on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. Two-two ball game in the top of the sixth inning from Corpus Christi, Texas. Jason Shepard and Tuckett Slade with you here on BYU Radio, 107.9 FM. The Islanders going to have a new pitcher here in the top of the sixth inning. Number eight, Cody LeCompte. He's a left-handed pitcher from Cypress, Texas. He's 5'9", 177 pounds. He's also a senior. Leading off the sixth inning, the BYU designated hitter, Keaton Kringlin. Well, got a whole new ball game, right? 2-2 game, top of the sixth. Makes it for a fun one. Keaton struck out in his last at bat, showing bunt right down the third base line. That was a perfect bunt and wow. a great throw by the third baseman Enrique Sanchez to get Keaton by a step. Yeah, great bunt, great play, but I think he got him. Keaton's arguing about it, but it looked like uh, to me that he got him. I think he got him. Yeah. That was a fantastic job. I thought that was a sure base hit for Keaton because it yeah. was a perfect bunt, but a great job by Enrique Sanchez to charge and make a perfect throw. Quickly one away here in the top of the sixth. Batter, Mitch McIntyre. Got BYU on the board first with the solo home run. It's quickly ahead. LeCompte, two balls and no strikes. LeCompte's another 
pitcher that's up on the mound working fast. He may even be faster than Perez. 2-0 pitch. Swing and a foul ball to the left side and out of play. Yeah, I know if you're a defense, you just love that. You love your guy that just wants to get up there and work as fast as he can. Especially on a cold, brisk night. Yep. Temperature has certainly dropped. Temperature is expected to be in the 60s, near 70 tomorrow and on Saturday. 2-1 pitch to McIntyre. Taken for strike two, evening the count at 2-2. Two and two. This Islanders baseball team began the year with two wins and then they've lost three in a row. Certainly want to take advantage of a team that's not playing great right now. I know it's early, but yeah, they've but lost draw, three in a row. Draw. You want to try and you want to but try sure. and pile on. You definitely do. But then you're also facing the arm that came out today that won their game, right? right. As far as you know, their first two games. So you know you're facing a really good opponent. DJ McNew on deck. 2-2 two -two count to McIntyre. Outside. Could take. Now full count. Three balls and two strikes with one out in the top of the sixth of a 2-2 two -two ball game. So Cody's an 84 to 87 mile an hour lefty. He's a three-pitch mix guy. Has a slider and a changeup. You know, likes to throw any pitch, any count. 3-2 pitch. Ground ball to second base. Nice job by Burtz to glove it and get it to first Good for play. out number two. Burtz a little sliding catch to his right. Now two away. Coming to the plate, third baseman third D.J. Baseman McNew. DJ McNew. That's how funny this game could be. Keaton has a perfect bunt that's defended perfectly, right? And then Mitch hits a ball, kind of heading up the middle of the second baseman, makes a great play on. Swing and, and a miss. Instead of DJ. having two guys on, right, nobody out, you have nobody on, on two, two outs. outs. So tough game we play. Noah Hill on deck if DJ McNew can get on base. Swing just got a piece of it. DJ in the hole, 0-2. DJ's last school was State Fair Community College in Sedalia, Missouri. Spent uh, quite a bit of time in Sedalia, Missouri, as a matter of fact. Swing and a miss. They struck out DJ McNew and retire the Cougars in order. Bottom of the sixth coming your way next. 2-2. Two -two. Cougars and Islanders on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin Jason Shepard. BYU 2, Texas A&M Corpus Christi 2. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning from Whataburger Field in Corpus Christi, Texas. Reed McLaughlin back out on the mound. He came in relief of tonight's starter, Jared Lesser. Facing the center fielder, Nick Anderson. First pitch to Anderson, taken for strike one. Yeah, Reed came in and had a big-time strikeout to minimize that to only two runs that inning. Anderson is struck out looking and flat out to left field. Ball grounded right up the middle and into center field. It will be a base hit for... Nick Anderson. Well, this is what they like to do. They get that leadoff on, and this changes their offense. We just saw that last inning. When they get the leadoff on, now they can run, bunt, do all the things that they love to do to put pressure on the defense, which they paid off last inning. Right fielder, Thomas Jeffries. Jeffries, the hitter. Tonight's right fielder. Jeffries is flied out and has a single. You would certainly expect Anderson to be putting some pressure on McLaughlin. The throw over to first. Anderson is back safely. 2-2 two -two ball game, bottom of the sixth. Both teams with seven hits. Reed McLaughlin on the mound. First pitch to Jeffries is outside for ball one. BYU and Ohio State tomorrow on BYU Radio and ESPN 960. One-zero pitch popped up. 
Jelilich moves up from center field, makes the catch for one out. And Anderson quickly back to first base. Nice job by Reed to get Jeffries to pop that one up. Yeah, definitely a great job there by Reed. Jelilich made me a little nervous there in center. Seemed like he had to beat on it, and then it's like he lost it in the high sky, you know, in the, it, at night, and then was able to, you know, catch up and get right underneath it for the easy out. But it didn't, it, it sounds easy, but it didn't look so easy. The important part is there's one out now. Still runner on first base. Drake Osborne, the catcher, is the Islanders batter facing Reed McLaughlin. Time was called by the batter. Shep, you know a guy can run when he puts on a, what they call it as a stilling mitt, right, at first base so that you, it helps you from jamming your wrist and fingers in the bag. And he just put one on on his left hand at first. So. That, that may tip what they are thinking of doing. Yeah. The pitch to Osborne called for strike one. I know Brennan Anderson had to wear one of those last year because he kept getting his wrist jammed on when he would steal. It's kind of a cool contraption that they make for those guys to protect their, their fingers and, and wrist. Osborne from Sandia, Texas. He's a junior, 5'10", 194. Another throw over to first. Anderson yeah. is back. I like that throw over. Anderson's getting his timing down, right? His feet are moving, getting his rhythm. you got to disrupt, disrupt that rhythm there. 0-1 count, one out to Drake Osborne. Nick Anderson at first. The 0-1 pitch for McLaughlin. Pitch. Got the, got the inside pitch. Good pitch. Nice. 0-2. Oh if, if you can live there and get that called for a strike, it's tough as a hitter. And then, of course, then the hitter goes ahead and, and shows up the ump umpire, right? Shakes his head, put his bat down. Steps out of the box. Yeah, it's definitely something you don't want to do. The umpire is now saying, get in the box. If I'm Reed, I throw this a little bit outside, you might get a call. 0-2. Oh One out, runner at first. McLaughlin's 0-2 oh pitch. Foul back by Osborne and out of play. Count remains. No balls and two strikes. BYU scoring a run in the top of the second and the top in the fourth. Lead 2-0. Islanders tied the game in the bottom of the fifth with two runs. McLaughlin's pitch. Ground ball to Jackson Clough. Thought about going to Got second. Him. Tagged him. Double play. He tagged the runner running by on his way to second. And then threw to first. Now there's some discussion on if the players were out. All of the umpires are getting together. Head coach Mike Littlewood out onto the field. And the umpires are telling coach Littlewood. So what? They pause for a what second. What the first base umpire called is he called interference on the runner running to second, okay, and called him out. But then he called the runner at first safe, which, hey, Jackson was able to throw him out. He was, yeah. So he that has, was he that has was to the be out, right? the easy call. Now was it, the throw to first. Now it's not like the ball didn't hit the runner. Now if the ball hits the runner, then the runner's automatically out and the hitter gets first base. But the ball didn't hit it. Jackson fielded it. And the guy hit Jackson trying yes. to jump over him. So if you're going to go interference and give him out, then you have to give the double play because he threw him out. It doesn't stop the play. Wow. So they called the runner at second out. The runner at first is safe. And head coach Michael Littlewood is coming out for an explanation. Yeah, explain this to me in the rules. I mean, okay, I'm glad that they called the guy at second out. But this throw from Jackson got was, him out. Yeah. was got him at out. first before the runner was. Yeah. I, I don't quite understand exactly how they're saying Osborne at first is safe. I've never seen that before. What we do know is there's two outs now. The batter will be Mike Williams. The left fielder. 
Coach Littlewood got the explanation. I mean, if they're going to give us one of the outs, right? I'd you rather want have the lead that runner. Out. I'd rather have that out. So. You certainly want the lead runner. That's yeah, for and, sure. and he's one of the fastest guys on their team. It would be at second base with two outs. So now we have the catcher, who's at first, who's at first base with two outs. And now Coach Morris is out talking to the umpire saying, okay, what's going on here? How does that work? I can't wait till you ask Coach Littlewood in the post game what the conversation was about. I want to about. find out what the explanation yeah. was that was given to him because that makes no sense whatsoever. Two-two ball game. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning from Whataburger Field. Jason Shepard and Tuckett Slade, your broadcasters tonight here on BYU Radio, one hundred seven point nine FM. Thanks for tuning in to BYU Baseball. Mike Williams. Mike Williams just announced will make his way to the batter's box. Runner on first in the form of Drake Osborne. We're still trying to figure out how the inning is not over and that he is at first, but that's what the umpires decided on. The lead runner was out. So now two outs and a runner on first. Reed McLaughlin facing Mike Williams. First pitch, swing and a foul. Strike one. Mike Williams has a hit in this game. 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss for strike two. BYU trying to get out of this inning without a run scoring. See what they can do in the top of the seventh of the 2 2 ball game. The 0 2 pitch from McLaughlin on its way. Pitch high for ball one. One ball and two strikes to Williams. Big game for BYU basketball tonight. Hosting San Francisco. Win tonight at the Marriott Center certainly goes a long way for the Cougars to. Finish the year in second position. The WCC. Williams with a fly ball out to center field. Jelilich down to a knee but makes the catch. And that's out number three here in the bottom of the sixth inning. We head to the top of the seventh. Cougars coming to the plate. 2-2 our score on the new skin. BYU Sports Network.